Hey guys, Gabriel here from Serial Killers. We got a uh, developer from Gigantic, uh, James Finney, right? Okay. So, um, just a quick guide for the starters that don't know anything about yeah. Gigantic. What's it about? Uh, so, it is a very fast paced 5 on 5 PvP game. Uh, draws influence from shooters, from action games, from MOBAs. Um, features, each team features uh, five unique heroes teamed up with one gigantic AI-controlled guardian, and the uh, goal is to kill the enemy team's guardian. And you use uh, map control, strategy, teamwork, a lot of really fast-paced uh, gameplay with you know skillful aiming and dodging and things like that. Uh, let's try to win. Okay. Um, so in, ter uh, in terms of uh, MOBAs, or let's say, um, what are you planning on, on, the, on the character rooster? How, mu how much characters are you going to implement in the game? Or Sure, uh, well, we will continue to add characters to the game over, over time. Uh, the uh, heroes that you play as are very diverse in Gigantic. You know, one of the things we're trying to do, aside from provide different strategic roles, different, you know, sort of purpose on, on the team, is making sure we made a game that could bring in players with different gaming backgrounds, different uh, play style preferences, different skill sets even. So uh, the basic controls in the game are third person shooter controls, but only some of the characters play like a shooter character, you know, that are really about that kind of aiming and, and even the skill design is meant to work well with somebody coming in with a shooter game mindset. Uh, other characters are more kind of action brawler. Some of them uh, have more of an RPG, uh, interesting kind of skill interactions design. Some of them are more just about tactical and positional play. And so um, for us it's really important trying to make sure that uh, from the start a very broad spectrum of playstyle is supported. Uh, we're in alpha right now. We're about to go into closed beta. Closed beta is going to start with 15 heroes. Um, internally we've got about 24 that we play. Though they're in various states of completion. So some of them are, are literally just stick figures running around, things like that. Um, but you know, we, we're continuing with that to add more. Uh, so far, how far are you in, in terms of balancing? Like you got uh, shooter characters and uh, RPG, like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, how are you going to plan, or how, what are you planning on yeah. fixing that? Or? Uh, well, you know, what I'd say is the game is, is fun right now, and that there's a, a rough sort of balance that's there. There's a big difference between you know your balance requirements in alpha and in beta, and then even once it's once it's live. I think the really important thing when you're trying to make a game and think about it being uh, good for competitive play is you have to view balance as a process as much as uh, a state. You know, especially introducing new heroes, introducing new maps. There are uh, creatures you can summon. That's how you control the map. And different creatures have different strategic abilities and different combat abilities. And the guardians themselves uh, can vary. So all these factors can, uh, you know, be threats to your balance. Plus, players are very creative and are going to find new ways to test things. So um, for us, it's been very important from the start to try to establish how we balance the game as much as it's important to make sure that it is, is balanced. Um, so uh, right now, it's certainly at a point where we don't have any fundamental questions about whether or not we can take these characters from kind of different genres and put them in the same game. I think that we can. It definitely... Um, Different ones put different requirements on us in terms of map design, for example. You know, uh, last year we added our first sniper to the game, and so this is a character capable of engagement at a much longer range than uh, had previously been possible. And um, it definitely made us have to look at all the sight lines in our maps um, more tightly. And there are a lot of a lot of things like that. You know, there's a pet uh, character that can, you know, uh, control pet to, to send it into harm's way while you know, if she stays out of danger, uh, may force you to look at uh, areas that are not traversable. Uh, you know, we have a lot of characters that use uh, skin, has a lot of verticality, verticality in it, that uh, have temporary abilities to do super jumps or to give their team super high jump. And so figuring out, you know, the density of those kind of objects in the map is also part of the evolution for us. Um, so as we've introduced these different sets of abilities, different uh, kind of character movement, different ranges of engagement, each one of these has been new lessons for us in terms of how to build maps for the game. Um, so th that part's been an ongoing process, but we're a lot closer now on that.
uh, in terms of mobile, um, what would you say was the, the biggest influence, like uh, like Google Legends or Delta, or in terms of uh, how's the map going? Or, uh, yeah, uh, honestly, I don't look at mobiles very much in terms of influence. It, it's true that you have um, characters that uh, you pick at the beginning and that you level up and you change them over time. It is five on five. You know, um, there's not a whole lot else there that that's really draws from traditional mobas. You know, we, we certainly um, what I'll say is that there are people on the team that uh, really love uh, League and some really love Dota too. Um, and we also, you know, I talked about the importance of building a balanced process. It's not just like, hey, did we fix this balanced problem? And part of our process is to involve players. So uh, we've been in Alpha for more than a year now. And part of Alpha is there's a larger population, but there's also a smaller group, the competitive core group, that is, uh, you know, more serious, highly skilled competitive players playing other games. And so uh, certainly the feedback we get from them uh, gets influenced a lot by where they're coming from. And some of them are, you know, really in the league, uh, things like that. Um, and so uh, a lot of the feedback that we get is uh, colored by that influence. Okay, maybe as uh, last question, um, is your focus on, on competitive or what are you planning in, in, uh, in terms of competitive gaming? Yeah, um, we think in terms of thinking of it as like an eSport or something like that, but that's not really something that's sensible for you as a studio to say, hey, we're going to you know, go out there and dump a bunch of money in the tournament and, and, you know, to say, hey, this is the next, next big eSport. But, um, you know, that's something that's going to come from, from players and, and community and that sort of building that, but uh, certainly from the very start, it's been our goal to make a great competitive game. You know, I think that you look at the uh, landscape out there and the, the history of competitive gaming that um, is very exciting, you know, from a game developer standpoint to sort of see that they, they kind of thing. See both the way that uh, people can really get into and sort of take your game to new heights and sort of, you know, uh, pushing the boundaries in it. And, what, what people can do, but also in terms of the way people engage with other people playing games, you know, that it's fun to watch games, and, and it was certainly deliberate on our part to try to make a game that would be more fun to watch, you know, it's just visually compelling, you know, sort of camera angles and animations and character lines and everything about it uh, was, was really exciting, uh, the pace of the game was really fun, make a game where um, the game doesn't drag out, make a game where it's possible to make a dramatic comeback if you if you earn it. And all that stuff is very deliberate. It's also very deliberate to try to build the discipline in your team to make a game that's uh, good enough from a uh, balance standpoint to be competitive, and also good enough from a depth standpoint. You know, one of the um, key things when you're making a, a game, if you really want people to come back and play more, you need to create opportunities for them to have uh, increasing mastery, for them to continue to learn as players. And so really try to play a game that both in terms of the action gameplay in it and in terms of the strategic play, in terms of teamwork and tactics, that it that will have a lot of depth to it. And obviously that's really important too if you want to be serious uh, competitive game. Thanks for the interview and we are really looking forward to the game. Yeah. Awesome, thank you.